In today's video, we look at seven terrifying stories from people who have had some strange experiences while working in the North. Now I want to know what you think about these experiences down below in the comments. From mysterious music playing, close encounters with wild bears, and otherworldly lights in the sky, is just some of the strange phenomena that have been experienced by workers in the North. It's pretty creepy when during night shift, you realize a moose has just been standing at the tree line, staring you down for an unknown length of time. Or finding bear tracks, crossing the tracks you made five minutes ago. The silence of a snowy forest in the dead of night, hundreds of kilometers away from anything, is pretty spooky. When your only contact to the outside world is a radio channel nobody's listening to, you feel pretty alone. My mom worked up in the far north of the NWT before she had a family, and she told me a couple of her stories. The camp she worked at had a big black dog. One morning when she was trying to get into the camp kitchen, the dog was sleeping inside, blocking the door. She began calling out, and when the dog wasn't responding to her calls, she kept bumping it with the door trying to wake it up. To her surprise, it was not a dog who woke up, but a black bear. Another time, she was walking to work in the morning and two glowing eyes were staring at her in her path. She turned on her flashlight, to her surprise pointing it directly at a wolf. Lived up north for a while on a three year job. A local took me way out into the woods one night because he swore that at midnight, in this one spot, you could see these ghostly figures that apparently froze to death. Obviously, I expected to see nothing. So we're sitting there in absolute pitch black darkness. You can't even see your hand in front of your face or anything around you. The sky is slightly gray from the thin cloud cover reflecting distant lights, but that's it. You can't even really make out the tree line. Now after time went on, we never ended up seeing anything that we came to see. At about 1220 or so, they were just smoking, chatting, and thinking about leaving, when they would hear an unmistakable sound of someone walking through the underbrush. Loud crackling of breaking sticks and branches could be heard, but still everything was black. It gets closer and louder, but we don't see anyone coming. There's nothing. And all we could keep thinking is how it's basically suicide to trudge through these woods at night or a good way to get stuck in the eye at the very least. And most likely, you'll twist an ankle or break something when you step off a ledge. The ground around here is very uneven, but it's definitely someone coming. You can hear a crack, then a snap, then another snap as it got closer. At that point, they decide to leave. They weren't afraid it was a ghost. They were afraid it was a person insane enough to be marching through the woods without a light. Whoever that may have been, they didn't want to meet. I do mineral exploration in Alaska. I'm often transported by helicopter to very remote regions throughout the already very remote state. A few years ago, my field partner and I came across what seemed like a bear kill of a caribou carcass. But when we got closer, it seemed odd. The only things that remained were two spines and one head. The head was arranged such that the mouth was wide open, pointing up like it was screaming towards the heavens. And the thing we found even more strange was the eyes were cut out. There's also been many instances of coming across old miners' buildings that were littered with skeletons of dogs, or strangely had new looking clothing that was from a child. The North is something else. In the military, we had training exercises in the Arctic. Once, we got dropped by plane on a remote island in March. This place is uninhabited all year around except for a few weeks in the summer when scientists come and live in this observation station and do climate research. It's so isolated, the fastest way out 
is radioing a plane in the nearest village, 350 kilometers away. We were camped close by, so we decided to go take a look. Nothing was locked. I'm talking no more than 10 plain old shacks. The whole place had the thing feel to it. We walk in the main building that serves as a kitchen, dining hall, and common area, and it was about eight or 10 of us. On top of that, we were armed. As we're shining our lights around and exploring, looking at the cool pictures and maps, the whole mood drops, and we all looked at each other and said we didn't like this. We don't know what it was or who may have been there, but something changed and made them leave. There was one night I was on a ship sailing through Alaskan waters, and it happened to be my first night ever seeing the Northern Lights. I can't believe how awesome that was. It made the sky clear, made the night look like it was dusk. We were able to see clearly for miles. A few buddies and I hit the roof, or what we call Little Deck, at 1 a.m. just to gaze at it. An hour or so in, there were six of us on top which was nearly the entire crew now. A big white spotlight shines at us. We were near land, but where the spotlight was, was above the water, and it wasn't low enough to be on a ship. From what I could tell, this light was very high up. It shined on us for about 15 to 20 seconds. Once the light turned off, we looked to see what it was and saw nothing. No trace of an aircraft or anything. Couple minutes go by, and the same light shined on us. This time, it was on the other side of our vessel, above the mountains. Still unable to see what it was, we all saw it. We all have never seen any aircrafts hovering above these waters, especially at 2 a.m. We don't know what it was. We think it might have been some sort of silenced aircraft the military was probably doing drills, or something we do not yet know. But anyways, that was one of the weird things to happen out on the ocean. I'm a geophysicist and I'm out to do survey work about a third of the time. A lot of our surveyors are in remote locations. I was doing one in my home province of Saskatchewan, very far north, about a six hour drive from the nearest small town, and then a 45 minute helicopter ride into our camp. Believe me, it's isolated. And this survey began in October of last year. So it's quite dark a lot of the time. My room was in the attic of our only building and the wood burning stove that heated the place was directly below my room. So I often had to leave the window open at night. One night, I had the window open and I could hear singing from outside, which was creepy. But I figured it was just a member of the crew who couldn't sleep. The next night, I hear the same thing. At the same time, about 3 a.m. And this time, I get up to go to the bathroom. Everyone else was sleeping in cots in a large open room. And when I'm heading back to my room, I realize that everyone was in their cots. I didn't hear the singing again for a few days. So by that time, it stopped creeping me out. Until about a week later, I wake up in the middle of the night and hear it. I go to check and once again, everyone is in their cots. I head outside and walk towards the sound. I step right up to the shore of the lake that we're on, and I hear it coming from somewhere across the lake. The sky is clear and the moon is bright, and I see somebody in the lake, which had already started to ice over. At this point, I am terrified, but I call out in case they needed help. They dive down under the water, and I don't see them ever again, nor do I ever hear the singing. Till this day, it still feels like a dream. 